Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a React project uh, with your very own Webpack configuration file uh, from scratch from an empty project. Now this is something I actually don't recommend doing if you want to start out a new project. I actually recommend using something like Create React App or one of those really good templates out there. This one is my favorite and they already have configured the Webpack file for you and they have optimized it and it's really good. So why am I making this video then? There's two reasons. The first is you can't always use Create React App or the sorts. Stuff comes up. For example, I wanted to make a Chrome extension and this just does not work if you want to set up a Chrome extension. You kind of have to set it up yourself. This was really just made to create React websites. And secondly, there is a new uh, competitor to Webpack out called Parcel. So I want to compare and contrast uh, those two together and show you guys what it's like to start a project with Webpack and to make your own configuration file with Parcel and compare the two. Okay, with that said, let's get started. So first things first, we need to install React and initialize npm in our project. And uh, we're just going to be doing hello world here where we uh, render hello world on a React element. So here I have an empty folder, an empty project. I'm just going to do npm init-y to go ahead and initialize the project. And then we are going to create a new file here, index.js. And this is where going to be my React file is. And in there, I'm just going to copy this. And we're just going to import React from React and import React DOM from React DOM. All right, so here we are just rendering hello world, this h1 tag, and we're getting an element, the root element, uh, and rendering our React application there. So to be able to do this, we need to install React and React DOM. So we're going to say yarn add React and React DOM. And now, this needs to be associated with an HTML file, right? So our JavaScript is going to be running on an HTML uh, file. So index.html. And here we're just going to say HTML. I'm going to create a body tag. And then we're going to have a div. And I'm going to give it the ID of root. And down here we'll have our script source. And I'm just going to. Uh, specify what JavaScript file we want to be running. Now I don't want to get the index.js file because this is um, the code that we write. We want uh, the code to be, for example, the web uh, browsers cannot load this. They don't know what this import from stuff is. This is new JavaScript syntax and it doesn't know how to deal with it. So we have to point it to this thing called a bundle.js file. Uh, and this is what we'll be creating and we'll be using Webpack for, is to create this bundle.js. And we need to take this code and compile it to code that the web browser will understand. All right, and I don't see my, okay, here's package.json file. So we have our React code that we wanna run and we have our index.html set up. Now this is super bare bones, albeit, but that'll work. Um, Next thing is to start up with Webpack. So we're just gonna walk through the getting started and then adding what we need to config this thing. So first off, we need to install Webpack, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and use yarn for this. Yarn add dev webpack. Dash D is shortcut for saving a development dependency. And then I'm gonna create a new file called webpack.config.js. And this is just going to be the configuration file for Webpack. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab. So this is, they're getting started. I think they have a Webpack. Um, they should have a starter Webpack here somewhere that we're just going to steal where they require the paths. And by default, you actually, and here we go, by default, you don't need a uh, Webpack config. Webpack can try to figure out stuff on its own, but it's not very good at it. So you need to configure some stuff. So here, um, we don't have to worry about 
file and path right now we're going to keep this super simple so modules.exports that's just saying here's our object and our object's going to be a uh, configuration for what pack here we say where's the basically the file we want to turn into this bundle.js and it's right here so index.js is uh, right here and we want to output a bundle.js file um, so super simple right we're going to take this and turn it into bundle.js now we could try running webpack right now but it won't work because it doesn't understand uh, what code we have here so mpx and if you don't know what mpx does you can just use that to uh, I'm just going to clear this you can use that to run uh, things so in our node modules we have webpack and webpack sources so in webpack there is uh, a binary that we want to run so we can use this mpx which comes with node now to run this if you don't have mpx you can install it I believe you can probably install it with that um, or download the latest node it comes with it now but let's run mpx webpack to see what that does so it's just running webpack for us and it says unable to parse it maybe we need a loader which is right we need a loader and the loader that we need is the babel loader so we are going to add a babel loader here and the first thing babel loader tells us to do is to download these thingies right here and it's actually not quite correct we already have installed webpack and it tells us to install this preset env now it doesn't know that we want to be installing react um, so we want to install a different env or preset and that is the react uh, preset and now I'm going to be using uh, the latest version Babel which is currently in beta which it may not be in beta when you're watching this so you can just grab pretty much whatever Babel loader and Babel core is the latest so over here I'm going to say yarn add those two files and then instead of adding these two which we already have webpack so using that env we're going to use the babel preset env and now babel has a lot of presets these are just basically plugins they bundle for you um, that have uh, functionality so you basically would want these plugins if you wanted to do react so they bundled them all together and called it a preset react so you don't have to install six different five different uh, plugins every time you want to uh, do react you just grab this all right, so we'll let those install. And now we're gonna come back here to Babel Loader. How do we add these things? So we need to create a module. Um, so we're gonna add our module and we need to add a comma. Now in our module, we have some rules. Uh, this should be pretty self-explanatory. Test, uh, we're looking for just JavaScript files makes sense index.js is a javascript file and we're excluding uh, node modules and bower components because they don't need it uh, we can remove this since we're not using bower uh, we're only using node modules so we can just say exclude node modules uh, from what we are uh, loading or parsing so here they're using babel loader which we are using as well and here they have specified the presets that they want and we're using preset react so we're going to change that all right, so cool, it finished loading and now I can run mpx webpack again and see what happens. Cool, so it finished loading, um, but nothing happened, right? Um, let's see if our bundle.js um, happens. Yep, and we can see, take a look at our bundle. This is what it turned our uh, index.js over here into. Pretty cool. Um, but usually if you're using something you want to view this as a website right um, and by default uh, I don't believe webpack serves uh, websites for you I could be wrong but there's this nice uh, dependency here called webpack dev server um, and what you do is you can we, we're going to install this so yarn add and this is a development dependency too and I think I accidentally installed um, yeah, Babel should be a, a development dependency, not a regular dependency. I actually don't know uh, the fast way to uh, move he this to here, 
I'm just going to leave it there for now, but if you are following along and you want to use this, make sure you do install these three as dev dependencies. Uh, I can pro I'll probably just remove them and then re-add them as dev dependencies after this video. Okay, so we just add uh, the developer server, so now I can just run webpack dev server, and what that will do is it'll listen for code changes, um, compiles the webpack every time, and uh, serves our code here. Uh, so I can now go to localhost 8081, and it doesn't look like it opened. There we go. And I can see hello world. All right, so we finally got um, our React project rendered on a website. Cool. And then as we make changes over here, all right, let's get rid of that. Uh, it listens for it, recompiles, and then we see it over here without the uh, bang sign. So cool. That's this basically bare bones, simplest uh, Webpack setup for React. Um, and let's just walk through again what we had to do to get this set up. So first we installed React and uh, set up our React project, right, with creating index.html file, uh, which we point at this bundle.js instead of index.js. Bundle is what Webpack creates for us. And then index.js, this is our code here where we, our React project lives. And then in a Webpack config, we install the Webpack and set it up. And we pointed it towards the file we wanted to transform, which is index.js. And then we uh, gave it what we want it to turn into. We call it bundle.js. And then we told it we are using React, so we need to use Babel Loader to understand React and compile it down to where the browser can actually use it. So a couple steps to get this set up. Um, but we have a Webpack, and then we had to install Webpack server to get a server running. Now to extend this, you pretty much just add on any plugins you want to Babel Loader, or you know if you want to add Webpack plugins, you can as well. So that is it for this video. What I'm going to be doing tomorrow is comparing this versus Parcel. So we're going to set up the same project using Parcel and seeing what it's like to set up a project from scratch using Parcel, which you'll find is actually a little bit simpler than setting up a Webpack project and doing the same thing. And it's supposed to be faster, so that is really cool. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.